Check this shit out. <sighs> Cryon Conquest. Cryon Conquest was developed by the company that sounds like only one guy works there, Vic Tokai. They also made some interesting, if flawed, titles for the NES like Clash at Demon Head, GoGo 13, Kid Cool, and Conflict. A quick glance at the cover and, man, what is going on here? I'm gonna guess this is Marvel's way of expanding the Star Wars universe to include Wizard of Oz. Apparently, yes, this was supposed to be a licensed Wizard of Oz game based on a Japanese anime, but given that the story is mostly about robots taking over the world, all I can say is, man, that must have been a rad cartoon. Speaking of story, oh boy. After this super long Terminator premise, you just get this quick cutscene where this spiky haired lad gets attacked, which somehow summons a witch to pop out of his cane. Love it. She only has one line of dialogue, I am Francesca, and then the game starts. The original Japanese version of Cryon was titled Magical Doropy and includes more cutscenes left out of the American version, but they are, surprise, only in Japanese. A quick hop over to YouTube and you can watch the left out cutscenes in English, which is pretty cool actually. I mean, imagine explaining how easy something like this would be to someone living in 1990. What a time we live in! So the story is something about how science can only be defeated by magic, and all the other witches have been sealed up. So Dorothy slash Francesca is humanity's last hope against Skynet. And then later, there's like a head robo-witch who beats the shit out of your pansexual partner. Damn, I am hooked, especially considering Cryon Conquest got absolutely none of this wildness. The best part though are these stage intro screens where you get a quick glimpse of casual Francesca on her day off. What a babe! It does little for me now, but eight-year-old James? Move over, Kelly Kapowski. What was I talking about? Oh yeah, so there's a game here. It's kind of like a straightforward version of its very, very obvious influence, Mega Man. You run like Mega, you shoot like Mega. You even kind of die like Mega. I've been talking about Mega Man clones a lot lately, and while other titles like Wampum, Power Blade, and Totally Rad heavily borrow from Mega Man's gameplay and design, Cryon Conquest just pulled out the old tracing pad and went to work. To call this a blatant ripoff is, well, pretty accurate, but mostly in aesthetics more than gameplay. Your attack is a cane or wand that fires just like Mega Man's gun arm, and it even charges up like the Mega Buster. It's fine, sort of, but it seems a bit slow to shoot in comparison, and as the enemies move really quick, there's a good chance you ain't hitting much. On top of Francesca's default weapon, there's also a whole grip of abilities on the start screen, and unlike Mega Man, you don't have to earn these and they mostly have infinite ammo. Okay, point for Cryon Conquest. While the weapon options are a cool idea in theory, they are often only useful when you've got prior knowledge of what's ahead. Once you see the enemy and switch over to whichever tool you'll need, it's often too late to properly position yourself to fire before a flock of bloodlusting robots devour you. Like the ball attack is pretty neat if there's an obvious enemy way out of reach that you know you can bounce into and you've got time to get the angles right, but when you need to use it quickly on the fly, <laughs> good luck. The freeze is pretty much like your normal attack, but I can never really figure out when it's more effective. The shield appears useful as it creates a laser wall that repels enemies, but only after you charge it up, and even then only for a limited time. So if there's a tough bad guy where the shield gives you more chances to shoot, you have to already have it loaded and ready to go, and then you need to kill said baddie before it runs out, otherwise there's zero chance you'll be able to fire it again before dying. The fire spell is a screen clearing attack that is the only ability that uses ammunition, and in this case it's half your life bar, so yeah, that's out. Then there's the broom. The broom, the broom, the goddamn broom. It works like the rush jet in that when you fire it takes off, but if you fire again while pressing another direction, it'll change course. It takes a long time to get used to, and you will for sure inadvertently fall off or move away you weren't expecting. It's also very, very sensitive to being touched, so you have to be pretty precise in where you place the broom or shift direction. A slight miscalculation by even the tiniest bit of a wooden pixel will get you dropped down to Spiky Town. Outside of the boss fights, you'll probably never touch the other powers in Francesca's magic arsenal, but you will use the broom, a lot, so you better get used to it. By the fourth stage, Cryon Conquest becomes basically an entirely new flying trap kind of game where brooming is your only option, and man, suicide is looking like a slightly better one. 
One thing I will say for this game, the bosses are pretty interesting, both in presentation and programming. They all look great, have interesting effects that they employ in attack, and most of all, they're very challenging, especially compared to the Mega Man bosses, which are kind of a breeze if you equip the right weapon. Of course, fighting them is patently unfair, since dying means running back through the previous level in order to try again, but overall, you can really tell the developers put a lot of thought into their design. But holy shit, these introduction screens? Why? I feel like I'm in room 23 back on the island. I'd usually show more footage as I discuss something, but I truly fear that viewing these banned Pokemon episodes could legit cause seizures. Seriously. And it's not brief. The whole intro takes 20 seconds while they run down all his stats like hit points, strengths, and even give you a useful tip from your friends like, good luck, or look alive there. Like those atrocious boss intros, everything here just feels so unpolished and slapped together. Levels end abruptly like you just jump down a random hole and yeah, that's it. Enemies always seem to appear out of nowhere, and when they do, they either blast towards you at full speed, or they follow you relentlessly while attacking at these hard to escape arcing paths. Dying at any point in a level brings you all the way back to the beginning no matter how far you've gone, and once all your lives run out, that's it. Game over. While Cryon is absolutely going for Mega Man's action platformer approach, it is way less of a run and gun than that game. If you try to Contra Blast your way through these levels, you'll quickly find yourself surrounded by hard to shoot enemies who never relent. But if you take your time and meticulously kill the bad guys, you'll find yourself in situations like on the broom where your speed is dictated for you, or like this hellacious underwater level that uses the Sonic the Hedgehog style of oxygen, meaning if you take your time, you'll run out of air and take damage anyway. I would never say this, but if there was ever a Game Genie worthy title, it's Cryon Conquest. You just have to be absolutely perfect to beat each subsection without dying, let alone the final stage of each level, including the boss. So many, many times I'd somehow impossibly eke out getting to the end with a sliver of life left, only to immediately get killed by the boss enemy and then have to start the whole grueling experience all over again. It's maddening. Even if you use a code like Infinite Lives, it will not make the difficulty balance of crime any more fair. You will die, thousands of times. Quite honestly, Cryon Conquest is one of my all-time least favorite games on the NES. I cannot stand it. There are obviously way, way worse games for the system, but there's a disassociation that occurs when you play something like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde or Funhouse, where you're so aware of how atrocious they are to play that they then become kind of funny and novel. Cryon Conquest is the opposite, presenting a familiar style and gameplay along with some decent sound and graphics, but complemented with some of the most frustrating mechanics and level designs ever made. So at no point would you say this is a bad game per se, because on paper and even in practice it's pretty decent, but in truth it is way less fun to play than any bad game you can think of. If a controller chucking title like Castlevania 3 is so amazing that even in complete frustration you'll want to keep playing, Cryon Conquest is so deceptively mediocre that when your anger completely bubbles over, you will never want to play another NES game again. Hey y'all, if you like my channel, I'm posting additional exclusive videos over at patreon.com slash big ol' words. I've been enjoying creating content with a wider focus beyond just the NES, so if you want to see more of that, and also give me some support, I've linked to my Patreon page in the comments. I'm also streaming a random game every Thursday, 9pm Eastern Standard Time here on YouTube, so come and hang out. Until next time, thanks for watching.